So today we're going to do just a quick little <coughs> jaunt into derivatives of bases other than E. Are we going to get into the change of base formula? Uh, no. <laughs> no, actually, I don't think we ever really use change of base Thank at all. God. I never. <coughs> yeah, it's a thing. It's it's so. For example, if you have like log base three of five, and you want to evaluate that, okay. Well, we don't have a log base 3 of 5 button on our calculator. All we can do is log base 10 or a natural log. And so you can rewrite any logarithm in terms of any logarithm with, like, for example, here, base 3, in terms of any other base that you choose. So, for example, let's say I want to rewrite this uh, with base 7. This is equivalent to, then, log base 7 of 5 divided by log base 7 of 3. So it's the same thing, that's all. If I want to change it to natural log, I could say this thing is equivalent to the natural log of 5 over the natural log of 3. So uh, this value here is equivalent to that value. It'll be the same thing. That's all. <coughs> that's change of base. But do we have to know that for calculus? No. So don't worry about it. Okay? Now, let <laughs> A be a positive uh, real number. A not equal to 1, and I got an email. Let U be a differentiable uh, function of X. Right, so that's our standard kind of like, you know, way we write things out there to start out. And let's just look at some things here. So the derivative with respect to x of a to the x. All right, so a, remember, is a number. So this is like 3 to the x, 4 to the x, 5 to the x, you know, something like that. Pi to the x. All right, same idea. This is a number to the x power. So the x variable here is, is right up here. So this is different than like x cubed or x to the fourth. In those kind of problems where we use the power rule, x cubed, right, the x is the base. Here, our variable, the x, is in the exponent. So it changes how we take the derivative, okay? So it's just natural log of a times a to the x. You'll notice that this derivative rule is very, very close to the derivative rule for e to the x, right? We know the derivative for e to the x is what? Uh, just, e to the just e to the x. Well, look, e, if, if, if this a were the number e, e to the x would be e to the x. But then we would have ln of e, but what's the natural log of e? 1. 1. And so when we did the derivative of e to the x, we really ended up using this rule. It's just that it simplifies to just e to the x alone. We don't need to worry about the natural log of e because it's just 1. Okay? But if we do another number, for example, 3 to the x, it will be natural log of 3 times 3 to the x. All right? So basically, it's just, you know, you just repeat it, but then you also have the little natural log in front there okay? of whatever the base is. Likewise, then, in a more general sense, if we have a function up there, so if we say something like a to the u, <coughs> a to the u, <coughs> well, it's going to be similar to this one, so what's, what's going to start with? Ln of a. Natural log of a. Okay. Times? Derivative of u. Well, not yet. Times a to the u, then times the derivative of u, which we'll say is just u prime. Okay, so here this is like saying like 3 to the cosine of x. It'll be natural log of 3 times 3 to the cosine x times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. Question? Why do I have this one written like this? Because here, this is just a to the x, just plain old x. 
here u is a differentiable function, so u could be cosine x, you could be x squared, you could be, you know, it could be some sort of like, it could be x squared plus 1, so it would be then the derivative of a to the x squared plus 1 is natural log of that a times a to the x squared plus 1 times the derivative of what's inside, so what's inside here is like the thing that's up in the power. So multiply multiply. Like yeah. Yeah, exactly. So like, and even if you want to just remember this one, remember if you, if it's x, it's natural log of a times a to u times the derivative of x, which is then just 1, so it's with respect to x. So there it is. Okay. Moving on. 3. The derivative with respect to x of another logarithm, so a logarithm that's not natural log, right? Natural log is always log base e. e. This is log base a, so it's some other, you know, number base. Well, what's the derivative of log base e of x? That is, what's the derivative of the natural log of x? 1 over x, right? Well, this does have that 1 over x there, but then it's got in front of that 1 over the natural log of a. <coughs> okay. That's the idea there. And then, again, more generically, if we have the log base A of U, <coughs> log base A of U, well, it's going to be 1 over the U, like it normally would be, right? If this were natural log, what's the natural log of U? It's 1 over U times U prime, so that's all still there. But then just in front, what are we going to have? One over the natural log of a. That's right. <coughs> All right, and if you'll permit me, these actually are from the change of base formula. All right, which was like, I don't know. It, well, well, I'll go through it here, and if it makes sense, that's great. If it doesn't, well, that's okay, too. Okay? Um, but for example, if I want to take the derivative of the log base a of x, According to change of base, that's the same thing as the natural log of x over the natural log of a. Now, natural log of a, that's just going to be a number, right? a is a number, natural log of a will just be a number. So I can rewrite this as 1 over <coughs> ln of a times natural log of x, right? These two things are the same. When I go to take the derivative of this then, so if like we'll say that's f of x. When I go to take the derivative, f prime, this is a coefficient basically, so it stays and what's the derivative of natural log of x? 1 over x. And so there's the derivative. Okay, just using change of base. That's all it is. Just a change of base and taking the derivative of that. Same thing is true then for the, the u as well. Okay, and just replace the x with the u and then times the u. So that's all it is. Okay. That's all it is. All right, so let's do three examples and then we'll uh, get you guys your assignment. So find the derivative of each. All right, so number one. Y equals 2 to the 3x will be the one we start with. Obviously, we're going to do this one. We're going to take this derivative here with respect to x, right, just like we normally do. Later, we're going to look at problems where we take the derivative with respect to t or with respect to other variables sometimes, and you'll see how that kind of changes up, all right? What do we, how do we denote the derivative of y with respect to x? Oh, dy dx. dy dx. We can also write y prime, right, for short, something like that. I'm going to write dy dx here just to kind of change it up a little bit, but you could write y prime. That's not wrong, okay? And then what's the derivative of 2 to the 3x? With respect to x, so yeah, awesome. What are you saying? The natural log of two times two to the power of three. So natural log of two 
times 2 to the 3x. Times 3. Yes, times 3, because we have something up in the oh, exponent dude. there besides mm -hmm. plain old x. So that we have to multiply by the derivative of what's inside. And the thing that's inside here is the thing in the exponent. So then times the 3. Yeah. Yeah. So even if it was x, like, you can still think like you would still put what the derivative of what's inside, but if but it were just, just x, it would be 1. So you don't right. do it. Right. Well, you I mean you can, but it's just... You can. It's so it's just 1. Yeah. <coughs> That's a Right, yeah, it's a little redundant. But, but, but you can if you always just want to like keep that h hard and fast rule for yourself, and then, you know, that way you won't forget it. Yeah. Because we tend to forget that when we just don't write it, you know? <coughs> okay. Questions on that one? That was it. That's the, that's the answer. We can't really simplify that very much. You know, I could rewrite it as like 3 ln 2, just kind of put all my numbers, my coefficients together, and then times 3 to the x. But that's really it. You know, if we wanted to, we could bring the 3 up inside and make it natural log of... I brought the 3 up. Oh, natural log of 2 to the 3. Yeah, which is then 8. So we could say 8. eight. So two, Yeah, so natural log of 8 if you wanted to. But it's just there. All right, let's do a different way here. So the derivative with respect to x of 1 minus 2 to the 3x quantity squared. So here, when we go take the derivative, what options do we have? What's one thing we could do here to, st to start kind of working? Okay, so one way we go is right, we could just jump in right away, take the derivative as it's currently written. Alternatively, what else could we do here? Before we take the derivative, what could we do? Find the derivative. What's that? Yeah, you could foil it out. We could try. Fo we could foil this out. It could work. If you want to do it that way, that's fine. I, I personally would. I think I'd go Connor's direction. But I'm just trying to again give you guys the options one way or the other. There, you could foil this out and then take the derivative. <coughs> but I'm going to go with Connor there and use the chain rule. Okay, I think that's probably the because it's written that way, and it's going to save us maybe a little bit of time. We'll see. So anyway, Ooh. what's the outermost layer here? The square, the something squared. So what's the derivative of something squared? Two times that something to the what power? One. So you can write the one, you can leave the one, that's fine. Okay. Are we done? No. Times what? The derivative of what's inside? Ugh. All right, so the derivative of one, zero, that's gone, so you don't have to worry about that. But the derivative of minus two to the three x. So, yep. Yeah. Negative natural log of 2. So it's going to be uh, negative natural log 2 times 2 to the 3x. Times 2 to the 3x. Times 3. Times 3, yeah. Mm. Okay. Yes. There it is. Pretty messy here. Let's see if we can put in this together. So I can do the 3 times the 2 there to give me a 6. And it still become, but that's negative. So it'll be like negative 6 natural log of 2 times 2 to the 3x, right, times 1 minus 2 to the 3x, something like that. Okay. So this, this negative 6 natural log of 2, that is just a number, just like a coefficient, basically, like that. And then 2 to 3x, so it's got an x in there. And then times the 1 minus 2 to 3x. <coughs> okay. Questions on any of that? We'll do one more here, then we'll be done. All right, number 3. The derivative with respect to x of log base pi of cosine of x.
log base pi, yeah. Because pi is a number, right? So it could totally be a base. Are you judging my handwriting? Yes, it's terrible handwriting. I agree. It is not very clear. All right, so we're going to go to... Jack! What do you say here, Jack? What's the derivative? Um, oh, uh, you do 1 over the log of pi. Natural log of pi, yep. Times 1 over cosine, 1 over cosine x, good. Times. times. Very good. Times the derivative of what was inside, right? Cosine is a function, so we have to multiply by its derivative negative sine as well. And so we get 1 over ln pi, and I'm going to go ahead and put the negative sine over cosine x there. And can we simplify this anymore? Yeah, I mean, you could put the ln pi and the cosine x like together. Okay, you can put the ln pi in with the negative cosine tangent. x. No. Ah, right, yes. Negative sine over cosine, that is negative tangent. So there's a good chance, if this were multiple choice, it would look something probably along the lines of this. Negative tangent over ln pi, because those sines and cosines go together to make tangent. Right? <coughs> sine over cosine is tangent. Cosine over sine, cotangent. All right? Cool. Cool. Well, that's it. Any questions on that? Otherwise, I'm going to give you guys your assignment. I know you guys are just waiting. But... Yeah.